I have been mistaken. You are a soldier worthy to stand among the Beresad. I did not think so when we first met. You did, of course. The day will come when the Arishok sends us here. On that day, I will not look to find you on the battlefield. In time. There is no point in dwelling on it. We should move on. Speak, then. Undoubtedly, they've used it to kill countless people. No, but they don't care what I think. I have no feelings you can hurt, Warden. As you wish. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Where did you hear this? Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. Many use the two words, minstrel and bard, interchangeably. But to do so in Orlais would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Some do. Mostly, it is nobles spying on other nobles. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? There's that, of course. But there's more to being a Grey Warden than killing Darkspawn and saving the world from the Blight. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men and you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus it is you who serves, not they. Oh, but you are. Your king serves you, does he not? A good king, a true king who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. And the country suffers for it. If you live apart from others and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water 
in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome. Your dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. That may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Excellent. I will get my soaps, and the dog shall have his bath after supper. Oh. Different. Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, Master, I exist to serve the Master. I shall kill for the Master and only for the Master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. Mostly, they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. So is being drawn and quartered. Maybe I'm not the only one with a smart mouth. Hmm? Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. Never to rule over him. The one who repents 
who has faith unshaken by the darkness of the world, and roasts not, nor gloats over the misfortunes of the weak, but takes delight in the Maker's law and creations. Boasts. It's boasts, sister, not roasts. She shall know the peas of the Maker's benediction. The light shall lead her safely through the paths of this world and into the next. Peace, sister, peace. She shall know the peace of the Maker's benediction. The veal holds no uncertainty for her. And she will know no fear of death, for the Maker shall be her bacon and her shield, her foundation and her... There's no veal in the chant. You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Oh. Hello, dear. Can we help you? Um, what she means is, in Andraste's name, be welcome. Stop correcting me! What would Andraste do? That's what you should be concerned with, I say. Andraste was no fuss budget. Praying for the good people of Denerim who've lost loved ones at Ostagar. It's usual to recite a stanza from Transfigurations when you pray for the departed. It's usual to recite the stanza correctly. But that's what I said. Andraste, deliver us. If her grace were to hear this. I wouldn't mess up the words if you wouldn't keep interrupting me. Grand Cleric Alamena understands the importance of concentration, you know. Her Grace, may the Maker bless her heart, lost her hearing 20 years ago. If she doesn't catch your blasphemous mistakes, it's because she didn't hear them. It is almost mealtime, isn't it? Um, uh, blessings of the Maker and of Andraste, his bride, upon you. I have never seen such a collection of merchants and people before. Tis always so. Dwarven craft. I recognize you. From Ostagar. And trust his blood. You're a Grey Warden. Duncan's apprentice. You killed my friend. And good King Caelan. I demand satisfaction, sir. So you would compound slander on top of treason. You dare smear Terran Logain's word. I do not like your tone, sir, but you may be right. I may regret this, but I cannot duel someone who may be guiltless. Leave, Warden. If I find proof, we will meet again. 